I'm joined by Ward Manuel, the Donald R. Shepard Director of Athletics at the University of Michigan, to continue our discussion about free speech. Ward, there's a lot of debate regarding whether or not sport is a viable platform for political and social activism. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's it's often a uh, difficult discussion to, to have around sports. I mean, I think when people come to a sporting event, um, be it high school, college, professional, uh, a lot of people are coming to get away uh, from their daily lives and cheer on uh, their family, their friends, their institution, uh, in, and want to see a great event and great athletes compete uh, in, in an event. And so I, I think on the one hand, people say, well, I want to come and get away uh, from that. I want to come and enjoy sport uh, and watch the competition. On the other end, the people who are participating in sport are also people in our society who have uh, their own beliefs and thoughts about uh, the good and the bad uh, and should be in a sense of the freedom of speech that we honor in America should uh, be allowed in that platform, in that quote unquote, in the professional sense, work environment uh, to make statements, challenge, make um, uh, particularly symbolic uh, kneel down sort of sentiment uh, in their work environments, similar to when I go to work and some people want to express their views uh, and talk about politics and things that are on their mind in our work environment. Um, but I think it has to be done uh, in a way that not only is this the symbolism, it's the education, it's what are you doing to help make a difference. Not What I tell our student athletes is I support your right uh, to make a statement. Uh, in some way, shape, or form, uh, either verbally or by by symbolically making a statement. But you have to be educated enough and have enough information to be out there to defend your perspective and what you want to do and to be challenged without allowing the emotion to get to you, but to really have the discord in, discourse and debate about what's important to you and why you're doing that. Mm -hmm. So you, talk, you, you alluded to some of the rights of expressions that you think your, your athlete should have. Um, what are the boundaries? Are there boundaries? Are there some really out of bound notions of speech or expression that should not be allowed in sport? Yeah, I mean, listen, um, you know, I don't want our student athletes doing lewd and lascivious acts as it relates to um, in, in the name of uh, freedom of speech and speaking out against something in our society, um, you know, or. or using profanity as a way uh, to do it. Or in a sense, what, I, what I've said to our student athletes is, um, particularly around a lot of this stuff came around the national anthem, um, when people have their eyes on, um, you know, the flag and, and the court and everything silent and, and these things come around, I said, make sure it's respectful. You know, don't uh, do anything to disrespect yourself, the flag, the institution. Uh, and in that sense, I think in the last couple of years, uh, we, we've had some expressions where our football team has gotten together and they put their arms around each other. They've gathered in a circle. Um, and that was their way. It wasn't something that they got me to sign off on. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it was their way of saying, we want to express our uh, discontent uh, with something that's going on in our society. In that particular case, it was... Um, the killing of um, unarmed black men in, in one year and the other year with some protests and stuff that was going on campus. But I felt that they did it in a very respectful manner. Um, and I think everybody reflects on how they want to reflect. And I've said all along, my father having served in the military, my father-in-law, my brother-in-law, having fought, all of them fought at different times in different wars or served at different times in different wars, uh, it's not something I would do, uh, but I also respect others' rights uh, to do it uh, at that particular time, as long as, it, you know, I've asked them uh, to be respectful about the way that they do things. Mm -hmm. So you, you mentioned your support, and, and you know, you have been pretty um, 
so visibly, visibly supportive of the student athletes. I mean, you participate in a video where the students are, are having messages of social justice. You know, the Michigan student athletes have worn T-shirts with messages of social justice. And so you've really been doing a lot to support the causes, but not a lot of managers and administrators are taking this stance. Why did you take the stance? Well, I, I think we have a role here at the university to... Uh, educate our student athletes and help them. Um, I, I'm sorry, educate our students uh, throughout the university and our student athletes are a part of that. Uh, and so for me, it's getting them to understand um, how to develop the information, develop their perspective, accept challenges of that perspective, have discourse and discussion around it so that they can grow. Because they're going to go out into their communities, not necessarily, you know, 98% of our student athletes will go pro in something other than sports. So they're going out into their communities, going out in the workplace. And I think it's incumbent upon us to teach our young people here at the university how to uh, handle differences, how to handle discussions, uh, how to um, sort of replace emotions with information uh, so you can have uh the, the challenging discussions that lead us to be better. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, I'm supportive of not, I don't agree with everything that they want that they're railing against, but I do want to teach them how, how best to, to challenge and, and to gather that information and support them. Not because it's something that necessarily drives me uh, to protest, but because it's something that, that they find uh, very important to them in their lives for various reasons. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you talk about some challenges. Now, you are the leader of a very prominent athletic enterprise. Mm -hmm. And so there are challenges, no doubt, that right. comes with athletes when they're being free in their expression, expressions and their speech. What are some of the challenges and implications that you face as an athletic director by supporting or allowing the athletes to speak? Is there pushback from alumni, from fans, from coaches? Yeah, you, you know, it's, um, you know, we're blessed here at the University of Michigan to have the largest college football stadium, largest stadium in the country. Uh, and we have 110 to 114,000 people on a, you know, any given Saturday. We have a home game. In 114,000 people, there's many different perspectives. And, um, and what I say to people when they either say to me verbally or in writing, um, you know, as you have your opinion, they, these students, these individuals have their opinions. They have a different platform to do it than, than a lot of people. So it's more visible. Uh, but, yeah, there, there's, there's pushback from, from fans. And what I try to get them to understand is, just like you have a right to write me a letter or verbally tell me that you disagree, they have a right and a platform to say that this is what I believe in or this is what I don't believe in. And so I, I, I really try to get our fans and our donors and people to understand we're here to educate them. And just because our values around freedom of speech, we want to uphold at the University of Michigan. Um, doesn't mean we all agree with them, but we can't only pick and choose what we want uh, our students to say or do, and then only if we agree with it do we allow them to do it. And so it's one of these things where, uh, yeah, there's pushback, there's there's conversations, but most most of the conversations here that I've had, the super majority of the conversations have been very respectful, understanding, thoughtful. Um, and, and they usually start with, I know you have to support the students' rights. And, and freedom of speech is very important to me and very important to But I just don't like when they do so-and-so. Um, and so we talk through it. And, and usually, it, you know, everybody, um, you know, again, is welcome to their own opinion. Uh, and we just try to work through it. It's mm -hmm. It's, a, it's been an issue here and there, but it's not a big issue amongst our fan base because I think the way our students have done it has shown respect. Uh, and so our fan base has been less negative and reactive uh, in comparison to some of the reaction in, in the professional uh, sports world, particularly professional football. 
So you talk about the fan base, and there's lots of conversation about what are the free speech right of fans? Do fans have a right to berate the athletes? So what, what's your perspective about, you know, the fans' right? And I know it's, it's tricky between sportsmanship and free speech. But what have are you your... been to some of the venues? Hey, you... listen. Listen. Exactly. <laughs> um, fans express their freedom of speech on a minute-by-minute uh, minute basis, mm -hmm. uh, both for uh, their team, against their team sometimes if you're not doing well, uh, and usually against the competition in a very open uh, fashion. Um, we try to uh, send a message of uh, civility and you know, speak positive, positively and support your, our team. Uh, here at Michigan and less focus on the negative uh, wording towards the uh, other team, but that doesn't always work. And, you know, we can't police and we won't police everybody uh, in that sense. Um, but we try to limit it. Uh, we try to limit it because we have um, uh, families that are here. We have children that come to our competitions. And so, we're not trying to cut off somebody's ability to say something. We're just trying to say, be respectful of those around you when you're using negative terms or bad words, profanity, and the like. But yeah, we we, uh, we our fan, our fans don't have a problem with free speech. <laughs> they, they don't. So you talk about your support, and again, I want to commend you. You do a great job of, of setting a culture where athletes feel they can express, you know, their opinions and perceptions. Yeah. But you have a team of people helping you to manage this conglomerate of an enterprise. Talk a little bit about how you're equipping or preparing your staff and your coaches to support the athletes. Like this, because many of them say, I, "I'm not. I don't have this social consciousness. Right. I came here to coach," right. which is a, a, a feat in and of itself. How are you helping your staff to be change agents as well? Well, we talk about it. I mean, we. It's not again. You know, I have uh, twenty. Six twenty-seven head coaches uh, of nine hundred plus student athletes. Uh, I have a staff of uh, three hundred and seventy-five people uh, in total, uh, all with different perspectives, different backgrounds, come from different cultures, different beliefs, and the, and the like. Um, and so, part of the discussion is really getting people to understand that we're we're alike and we're different in many ways. Uh, in that. Uh, it's important as they want to be heard that they allow their student athletes to have a voice. Uh, and so it's really an expression. And what I try to do is just set the, the tone and the expectation that this is okay. It's okay for our student athletes to, to have a perspective. Uh, not only do, is it okay? We want to seek it out. We want, we want to understand, um, and I don't tell them it's going to, our student athletes, is going to be easy. And we're not always going to do what they think we need to do. But we're going to have discussion. We want to know. We want to have that kind of collaborative uh, thoughts that go into it. But ultimately, uh, the coaches, uh, our policies, our leadership around certain things that we find to be of value uh, to help them are going to be there and consistent. Um but it's that it's uh, that it's really okay for our students to have a voice. It's okay for our staff to have a voice. Um, and again, it goes to even with the staff. How are you doing it? How's the respect? How's the interaction with those who disagree with you? Uh, you know, we don't want a workplace that gets into um, loud, emotional discussions around every topic that that somebody's bothered by or whatever. But we do want to have discourse if we can. Uh, if something's bothering somebody so that um, information, thoughts can be shared where we can get better. And I think if we're focusing on uh, helping people to be better, uh, helping people to be stronger, to be more educated, to, to drive success in their lives, not only on the field of play, but off the field, uh, in the classroom, personal growth and development, if, if that's our focus, then I think we're uh, we're going to all do it the right way. Right. And, and speaking of doing it the right way, I, I think you are. I think you're really intentional in creating, you know, students, student athletes who are doing great in the classroom, great yep. on the fields of competition and good citizens. So as we conclude here, you've been very insightful in sharing with us some very uh, unique insight. What call to action or concluding remarks do you have about this notion of free speech in sport? Because we know this debate will continue. Oh, sure it will. I mean, you know what? It's it's uh, it's been around for a long time. 
um, you know, you go back, you know, in, in the sense of our history, uh, you know, when you think about the discussion around race, Jack Johnson was talking about this in the early 1900s uh, as a boxer in this, in our society and some of the things that uh, he did and the emotions and the, uh, the sense you you go you fast forward uh, through Jackie Robinson and Muhammad Ali and um, you look at what happened in the '68 Olympics and you, you know you just see sport in freedom of speech and freedom of expression for or against something. Um, you know, in most of those cases, it was for uh, rights of of black people, African American people against. Uh, those who wanted to hold those rights down. Uh, you know, uh, you look at uh, those kind of things, and, and that's where I say sports has made a difference. Um, you know, you, um, you, you just see, um, you know, when Branch Rickey, a U of M uh, law grad, uh, brings Jackie Robinson in, um, and people have a sense of seeing African Americans and Black people in a different perspective. So I think you're always going to have this intersection of sport uh, and a freedom of expression uh, in a voice because of the platform and the stage that exists. Because of in in particularly in America, uh, in in elsewhere around the world, but particularly in America, where we hold our sports figures up on a pedestal. Uh, and we give them that platform and that avenue to express themselves and put a camera in front of their face uh, and want to see them uh, perform, we also have to listen to their thoughts. Uh, and in that, uh, they have a powerful voice uh, when they want to speak for or against something in our society. And I think they should use that voice when they feel it's important to them, just like anybody else has a right to to. Freedom of speech is one of the founding uh, principles of this country. Uh, and so for me, uh, my belief runs deep that we need to support people's rights to do it in a manner that's respectful. That, that's all I, all I ever say to our students is to try to do it in a respectful manner because you're going to be heard more if you do it that way. If you do it out of emotions and you're, you're mad and you're cursing at somebody and they're not going to hear you, you know, you're not going to change anything. Um, you know, it doesn't mean you don't get loud in the discussion, but you got to know what you're talking about. You got to come, you got to come with it, the educational information and those kind of things. And so for me, I don't, I don't think it's going to ever go away. Uh, and I think it's helpful. Uh, I think it's uh, immensely helpful uh, to us uh, as a society. I think of, back, uh, I'll end in thinking to President Gerald Ford and uh, coming to Michigan and having uh, a black teammate in Willis Ward and befriending him uh, and what that helped our society when he became president in terms of him being fiscally conservative but but socially he was, he was more uh, liberal uh, than his counterparts and it was because he had a different experience, and he spoke about that, and he talked about that. Jack Kemp had the same thing, so it it helped, it it worked with Jack, uh, Jackie Robinson, Muhammad Ali, Jack Johnson, but then you see President Ford, um, and so it, it it works both ways. It wrote, works across races and gender and those kind of things. When people have experiences and express and debate and start to understand each other our world is a better place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And speaking of our world being a better place, I agree with you that, you know, sport has made a change. Uh, it does have social implications, but I think it's leaders like you that bring that consciousness to the role that really helps us to maximize the social political implications of sport. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your You're insight. Welcome. It's been valuable. And uh, again, Ward Manuel, the Donald R. Shepard, Director of Athletics at the University of Michigan. Well, thank, thank you, you, teacher, you for having me. Appreciate it.